Yeah, okay. Okay, good morning, judges. I'm Zheng Xing from Super Avia Yiboy, and I'll start by introducing my group members first. I'm in charge of the alarm and notifications, and I'll be covering in the lecture, I mean, in the presentation, the rationale and the brief summary of the application. Next, my... Next, my groupmate, Weirong, who is in charge of the user interface, will be covering in the presentation the key features, interface, and the demonstration. Last but not least, Damien Tan, who is in charge of the database, uh, will not be joining us today as he's currently overseas. Now, let me start with the rationale. We notice an absence of uh, IVIE uh, applications for Android. Therefore, this means that the mobile community in NUS is not properly accounted for. This is why we wanted to create an application that is both unique and easy to use so as to cater to a larger audience group. So why did we create this particular uh, application, Tiamla? We noticed that it's common for students to forget to silence their phone during lessons or lectures. And this, is, uh, this annoys both the teachers and students. And some students, we may even ask that particular student to uh, Tiamla. But on second thought, it's actually not totally their fault because uh, this is a task that will be re repeated every day throughout the whole semester. And sooner or later, he or she will forget to do it. This is why we created Tiamla, which is basically an application that silences the phone according to a student's timetable, which is retrieved from the student info API. This automates the uh, repeated process of having to silence and unsilence your phone. And we believe that this application is useful because, uh, or basically because there's minimal interaction between the application, uh, user and the application. The only time that the user has to touch the application is when it's during the initial activation and he has to key in the matriculation number. Other than that, uh, there is no need for the user to touch the application unless he or she wants to change the settings. Next, let me touch on, on the originality of app. Firstly, I believe that there's no such application uh, in the IVIE or even in the Android market. Secondly, uh, I believe that this is not a typical IVIE application which basically just display information which, uh, which is just retrieved from the API. We do not want to do such an application because we believe that instead of doing such an application, the student can just uh, use the browser to just access the website. And browsers nowadays are quite uh, smart in the mobile phone. So we, uh, our application, instead of providing information, it uses this information and process it so as to uh, make life more convenient for the student. So as for the platform, we design it such that it will be uh, uh, compatible with Android 1.6 or later, and we use a tree framework for, from the platform, which is Alarm Manager, which was used to schedule the silencing and unsilencing, and the SQLite database to store the uh, schedules, and lastly, the Notification Manager to display the notification showing the uh, current lesson that the student is in. Now, let me talk about why I think that our application has an edge over other applications. Firstly, I believe that it's very intuitive, and even though we included a how to use section in the application, uh, I, I guarantee you that after Weirong has demonstrated the application, you will trust me that you, you don't even need to touch that section, and you can just know how to use it. Next, uh, the, the user interface is very neat, as it revolves around the dashboard, 
and you can access every every uh, page from the dashboard. So there's no way the user will get lost. And lastly, it has a very clear purpose. Instead of having an application that try to does everything, this application only does one thing, and therefore, when a user uses it, he's very sure of how to use it and what is it for. Now, let me pass on to Wei Rong, who will elaborate on the key features. Wei Rong, please. All right, thank you, Chen Xing. Morning, judges, and my name is Wei Rong. Today, I'll be touching on the key features and uh, interface, and lastly, I end off with a demonstration. All right, first, let's start with the key features. Downlight has three main uh, key features, which is customizable timetable, auto reply SMS system, and also a sleep mode feature. Right, we begin with the customizable timetable. For this application, we want it to be as flexible as possible for the students. Besides getting the schedules uh, from the student info API, uh, it would be better for a student to actually add, modify, or delete their schedules. Uh, uh, yeah. So three reasons why we want we think that flexibility is important is because first, uh, we might think that students might skip lesson, so which is not very encouraged. So when students skip lesson and when this when they get info from API is the official um, schedule, so they can they can just uh, delete the lessons. All right. Secondly, students might attend lesson that's not reflected in the system. Right. There's been uh, cases in which um, students change their tutorial lessons and uh, it's not um, reflected in the official system. Right, so students can actually move around the timetable based on uh, their current schedules. Right, uh, thirdly, students might add other weekly events uh, besides their lessons, such as CCAs or meetings, etc. Right, here are some of the things that you will see in a timetable. First, you realize that the lessons are colored according to different lesson type. This is for easy reference for the students. Next, you will realize that this timetable has a timeline view. Right, so it, this timetable starts at 8 a.m. and you can actually scroll horizontally to 12 midnight. We did it on purpose such that um, students do not have to scroll a long way just to find their schedules. Because a uh, lesson normally starts at 8 a.m. and lessons can't, uh, there, there won't be lesson after midnight, right? Yeah. Right, next, we also have came up with an automatic reply SMS system. Right, so once the silent mode is being activated, uh, sometimes students might not be aware of an incoming call. So, hence, we came up with this auto reply SMS system, which is used to design, um, which is designed to send SMS message to the caller. The SMS message is customizable by the user, and user has the option to set the frequency of an auto reply SMS. Later, during the demonstration, I will show you how it works. Right, we try to even think further. All right, how about making an SMS more dynamic? Right, hence we came up with this idea called token. Right, and this auto reply SMS message system, users can key in pre-assigned keywords, right, or, or what we call as token, to further provide the caller with the necessary information. Right, uh, some of the tokens that we actually, pro or rather these are the examples of the token that we provide. For example, the start time of the lesson, end time of the lesson, the lesson name, uh, frequency of the lesson, and the lesson type. So uh, from here you can see an example. For example, my lesson type ends at end time, call me later. So once this caller called uh, the student, and the student, this, the student's phone will reply as, for example, my MA1505, tutorial ends at 10 a.m., call me later. So obviously the caller will call uh, the students at 10 a.m. So it's quite an um, easy way to, yeah. All right, thirdly, we also came up with this feature called the silent mode. Oh, uh, sorry, the sleep mode. When sleep mode is activated, the phone will remain in silent mode uh, between the wake-up time and the sleep time. Right. Sleep mode is useful especially for students who do not wish to pick up any calls uh, during a certain period of the time. Uh, probably, example, it's in their laboratory work. So they don't wish anyone to call them and they can activate this function. Okay, I will talk about the interface now. Right, we know that an average user might not have the time uh, to learn or understand a very complex system. Hence, the interface follows Android user interface pattern very closely. 
All right, we wish to make the app as easy and uh, as easy to navigate as uh, possible. And here are some of the Android user interface pattern that we have followed. Right, first we use uh, things like Quick Action Dialog. Quick Action Dialog is a very fun and easy way to show our option menu. Right, we use Text View, Text View to switch between different kinds of settings. And Time Picker to, uh, for easy and uh, convenient input of time. And lastly, Notification System to inform students once the app is being activated. Right, so now I'll be showing you a demonstration on our app. Right, so once you enter the app, okay, the first page you'll see it's uh, what we call as dashboard. And inside this dashboard, first you'll realize that uh, the first line you'll see that this is uh, today's week. Okay, this is just a dummy, so it's not today's, it's, um, yeah, but you will see the week number of semester and week number. And followed by a button, a toggle button, which is um, to activate and deactivate the app. And um, a timetable button, which will go to the timetable activity and settings, uh, which will go to the settings activity. So it's really idiot proof because there's only three buttons for you to click on. Right, for the first start, uh, we will enter the settings. Okay, so once you're in this setting page, you realize that uh, you will find a matriculation number. Right, um, so I just key in my metric number. Right, so here I just key in and then click OK. After that, you can set your preference for your ringtone mode. Some, some, uh, some students prefer it to be silent and some prefer it to be uh, in vibration mode. So for me, I'll just put it as silent. Okay. And down this, you'll realize that you'll find the sleep mode function. So uh, you can activate the sleep mode over here. Once activated, you can set the sleep time. Probably for me, uh, yeah, probably I'll just put um, 12 a.m. And I wake up at uh, probably earlier. Right, something like that. Right, so this is how the sleep mode works. Sleep mode will actually has higher priority, uh, uh, as, um, or rather sleep mode has prior higher priority compared to other ring to uh, other, um, schedule. So once, if there's a break, uh, later I'll show you if there's a break, it will, this sleep mode will still, act, uh, this app will still be activated because of the sleep mode, because it has a higher priority. Okay, over here, this is a clear data uh, button, which is just to reset your data. And uh, how to use page, which is not very necessary. Okay, um, all right, the next step, you realize that uh, you will find auto reply SMS. And uh, I think I'll be showing you this later. Okay, so we are done. Now let us go back to the dashboard. Okay, so uh, for the first time, you'll say that the uh, schedule is empty. Would you like to download? So I'll just click yes. Right, do know that this uh, thing can only be assessed in NUS website because based because of the student info API can only be assessed in uh, NUS campus only. Unless you have VPN, yeah, which uh, usually mobile phones are, uh, which doesn't support in mobile phones. Okay, we are done. All right, so this is our schedule. 
Right. Um, so uh, if you actually, if you don't want, you can actually just go back to the dashboard to activate your schedule. All right. As you can see, it's a timeline view. Is really you can scroll from a.m. to 12 midnight, and you can just add any of the uh, lessons that you want. Right. So for example, um, I'll be adding a lesson which is probably now. Right. Sorry, the emulator is very slow. Yeah. Okay, so we are done. Right, so here the lesson uh, pops up over here, and I've lesson at eight to ten a.m. So it's it's really very easy to add lessons, and um, to delete lessons. Okay, for example, if I want to delete, um, I don't like maths, so I I just delete maths. And you're done, right? That's very easy. And uh, if I want to change my tutorial slot, probably I want to change to Tuesday, same timing. I'll just update. And we are done again. Yeah, so, right, that's it. So this is the timetable. And once I finish editing my timetable, the next thing is I'll just go back to the dashboard again. Everything is centralized in the dashboard. And I'll activate the applications. As just now, I've already set, uh, set up the timetable at 8 a.m. So this ring, uh, silent mode is activated. And right at the notification system, you'll say that this is the lesson and silent mode is being activated. And you don't have to do anything. Right. Okay, so I think we still have time. Um, I'll just go through the how the auto reply SMS system works. Okay, so um, again, this at uh, this uh, SMS auto reply SMS system needs to be activated. So um, user can. Um, to activate it if they don't want this, uh, if they don't require these functions. Okay, for example, um, I will just type a message. For example, I just type I'm busy. Oops, okay. My, so now I'm, I want a token, so I'll just put my um, lesson, which is percent lesson. And Oops. Okay, so here I'm done. Um wait, I, I won't add this type. Okay, so after I've finished uh, setting this uh, SMS message, the next thing I'll do is to set the SMS reply interval. Right, this is very necessary because um, uh, imagine if the caller called this person, right, like this student, and if it call, keep calling, obviously the person's message will keep sending, right? So, uh, and yeah, to prevent this, the user will... The user... The user will be able to actually customize the interval between the SMS reply. Okay, so uh, you can actually set uh, 30 minutes, 1 hour, or 2 hour. Usually the lesson will end 1 hour, 2 hour later. So it's probably nice to set 2 hours. But for now, I'll just set as always reply. Okay, now I'll need my friends and sing to call me. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot to activate. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay.
なんかね、ビジュアルそれです、ノーリセプション。So, so I, I think there's no reception. So, um, <laughs> I should not review, but it's here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try another time. Okay. Alright, so now we should receive a message. Alright, so it says, um, oh, oh, okay, sorry, I, I, I key in the wrong token. Yeah, but anyway, it's my some lesson lecture ends at 10 a.m. Yeah, so I, I key in the wrong token. Right, so uh, yeah, that's an example of how um, this SMS reply system actually works. Right, so here I've quote, uh, quoted from an American writer, uh, Richard Buck, and he says that the simplest thing are often the truest. Right, we hope that this simple app can uh, improve the life of NUS students, and we hope that they will find the app very useful and very personal to use, uh, and will not treat it as another typical IVL app. Right, with that, I finished my presentation, and I would like to thank the judges and organizers for giving us this opportunity to present our app. Right, thank you. Right, any questions? So, um, I I have a question. Like, uh, if I'm if I'm the user, right, and you know, I basically in the SMS, um, um, you know, section, right, when we reply. Um, I don't quite know what tokens to actually put in it. Do you have like? Uh, I think one improvement would be actually to have a, a kind of a list of tokens within the menu itself, or not. With I, I know what you're gonna say. Yes. It's probably gonna be in the how to. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. But it it would be it would be better if it, it's kind of like integrated into when you actually you know do type in the thing or. By default, there would be a default message already available with all the tokens that are already in there, so that mm. somebody actually knows uh, what the tokens are and don't type it wrongly like what you did. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, probably you actually wanted to put uh, buttons in the the um, the dialog menu, but uh, due to uh, time constraint, yeah. So when I click a button, it will just like automatically uh, generate the token. However, very very interesting uh, uh, application. Uh, thank you. How, however, just just for for you to note that uh, there are there are some applications out there that actually already does that. Uh, actually, yeah. So so for the silent mode and everything on Android. So yes, yes. So uh, you, you guys are we, the first. One. We understand, but um, most of them are actually they show it in a list view instead. It's not really designed to be in a list view. That means it's listed and not in a schedule way, right? So that's what we. It, it's not really designed for students, that's what we think. Right. Testing, okay. Um, good job, guys. I think uh, it's a very, uh, I, I would say, 
I mean, yeah, it's what he said. It's not really that original in terms of um, in terms of what's out there in the market. But uh, I always feel that uh, in some ways, originality is slightly overrated because um, when you think of an idea, most of the time, uh, someone has already developed it already um, when you just thought of it. So, um, but the good thing is that uh, it's about. Can you hear me, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, what, what I want to say is that um, <coughs> even though it's, even though it's, uh, it, it's not original, there's something out there, right? Uh, the good thing is that, uh, as, as what you quoted just now, it's a simple act, right? And, and, and what people like nowadays, right, is um, familiarity. So if, if they see something that they're familiar with, let's say, for example, putting on things to sell mode, yeah, it'll be great. Um, so that's a plus point. One thing I want to, to take note, uh, can I see um, these options set where you put the settings in? Can I see that again? Yeah. Alright, can you uh, scroll, scroll it up and down? Okay. One thing I, I realized is that um, you don't you don't have like let's call sleep time, right? After you set the sleep time, does it show you the sleep time? It's, oh, it, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's one thing that, that I think you you should try to to have because uh, it gives it gives uh, it gives feedback to the user. Um, I think one of the important thing that that the user wants is is that they like they like not to waste time. So the less clicks, the better. Yeah. Yes. Understand. Thank you. Do I still have time? Can you speak? Yeah, yeah. Yep, I'm fine. Yeah, that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, good job. I think it's a very good app that you Thank can you. even consider bringing over to the commercial world. Just like a, besides IBLE timetable, you just log in your normal calendar and you will have a commercial app ready. Okay, just a few things to note. Uh, you got to thoroughly explore what is the functionality of Android compared to iPhone. Uh, contrary to what you have said, uh, VPN is supported by Android. Uh, no, um, we have already checked. The VPN, it's, um, they need a software to install. Uh, the, the VPN, it works differently. So um, we, we actually tried in our phone, but it didn't work. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it need a, a software to do that, to assess the VPN, yes. Okay, specifically for NUS scenario? Or? NUS only. I, I think it's NUS only, but you need a okay. uh, you need Java to open the to assess the VPN okay. if you're outside NUS campus. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then if that's the case, is okay. Just that, just try to fully understand how the VPN works, and this will be a thing that you can bring up to the school on what to improve on, so that your app can be utilized fully, even at home. Or, because essentially this app, if you have customized over a it doesn't make sense to not work when it's not in the campus. Mm. Yes. But the, uh, the timetable actually downloads it first, right? Into your, into your phone. Or do you always have to access any time? Uh, it's, it's only one time. So it only downloads yes. one yes. time. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. You only need to be in, in, in school time. once. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, man. <laughs> you have to be in school to do that. And then you wonder why your teacher cannot get you because some sort of Exactly. Right. Um, have you thought of using uh, location based? Um, I'm not sure they support it in any ways. Uh, but have you thought of using uh, location based kind of uh, programming whereby uh, you can detect your location in order to activate uh, the silent mode or not? Um, we we didn't really thought of that, but we actually before this idea we thought of uh, doing a location uh, based app, but we realized that NUS isn't that big and it's always we are always in the building, so uh, I don't think it'll be very accurate to actually activate uh, the GPS. Yeah. Thank you.